10 million girls and women in the U.S. and a million boys and men are struggling with eating disorders. So to talk about this crisis, we have with us this morning Tom Davis, who has battled bulimia, and Lynn Grief, CEO of the National Eating Disorders Association. Thanks to you both for being here. Thank Thanks you for having us. us. Uh, a lot of people may be surprised that we have a male with us to discuss this uh, problem. Uh, you know, one in ten victims of eating disorders, uh, people <coughs> suffering with eating disorders, are men. And Tom, I want you to tell us how it affected your life. Well, I've written a column, I've written columns about it for the uh, record of Bergen County, as, as, um, which is the newspaper I'm employed with. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> it's something that's affected my life for the last six years, six, 16 years, and it's, um, it can be a debilitating uh, illness, but at the same time, uh, right now, I'm, I would say I'm fully functional and have it under control. Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, you often uh, feel withdrawn from the social situations, uh, and uh, it, it, it can affect you know, just about every aspect of your life. Was your health deteriorating, and what got you to a point that you knew that you needed help? I lost about 50 to 60 pounds within about a two or three month period. Um, in the last, 20, or last two weeks, I lost about 20 pounds. Um, that's when I reached the, uh, I would say, the uh, most extreme levels of the uh, disorder, uh, which was bulimia. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think it started out actually as anorexia because I was fasting and I was also an avid runner and had a dramatic weight loss. Over exercise uh, is one of the things, uh, one of the warning signs to watch for. Lynn, I want to bring you in now and talk about what is, what are the things that lead people to uh, come in contact with or suffer from some of these eating disorders and how do you begin treatment? Well, first of all, research is now showing that people are genetically predisposed to this disease and it's something that passes through in generations and they may have this particular chromosome but then the case is whether it gets triggered in their own life. Mm -hmm. um, one of our goals at the National Eating Disorders Association is to catch people's eating behavior that's disordered before it actually becomes an eating disorder, before it becomes a full-blown disease. Well, let's talk about some of those warning signs then if we can. I know Tom had mentioned that, uh, that the overexercise was one. In adults that might be something, but okay. this is showing up in children who are very, very young. Dieting. We have some doctors on our board that say if you have a healthy, average size, normal child, and they start using the word diet, just perk up your ears because that's the first thing to look out for. Children that are, are healthy should not be dieting. That we should be teaching our kids to eat healthily and to exercise. At what point does it become a problem though? When, when do you decide to get professional help or consult a doctor? When you see your child Dividing the food in funny portions, having like a ritual with the food. If the child leaves the, for the bathroom after every meal, or you notice a frequency in that, obviously, you know, weight loss is, is significant. You notice that. Um, also, there's attitude changes in their behavior, um, getting along with people, family interactions. You know, people say, I don't know what, what's going on. She has PMS. Mm. Well, not necessarily. Okay, things to get checked out. Tom, yes. your uh, recovery is going well. You feel that you have it uh, under good management? Yes, and I feel like it, uh, the last, uh, since I've been writing about it in my calm, which is actually about mental illness, um, it's been a cathartic experience for me. And I've gotten a number of emails from people saying, you know, I've uh, seen some of these same symptoms in my child. Uh, what should I do? All right. Well, more information available on the website, right? NationalEatingDisorder.org? Yes. Okay. Very good. We Thank will you. Uh, let people know about that. NationalEatingDisorders.org. Thank you both for being here and sharing your thoughts about, uh, about this problem. It Thank is you a crisis. For all right, that is Fox 5 News for now. I'm Chris Galis, and any moment now, we want to warn you that uh, New Paul... ...it typically has its onset in the teens for both women and men. Bulimia typically has its onset late high school or college. Tom Davis was in college when he first began dieting and later purging. Because I thought that there was something wrong with my stomach and because I was always obsessing over my weight. Tom is now a columnist for the record in Bergen County and has openly written about his eating disorder. He says it first began with a traumatic breakup with a girlfriend. And the next thing I knew I was, uh, thought I could make myself better by, uh, make a, you know, make, by purging myself. So I think within that two or three week period I lost about 20 pounds in it, on top of the uh, 30 I already lost. Even later in his early professional life, it continued. I would, uh, you know, constantly obsess about whether I was eating too much or whether I was putting the right thing in my body. Diets sometimes trigger the disorder in high-risk boys or men. Dr. Mickley recalls one patient, a very thin but formerly overweight teenage boy. When he came and I talked to him, he pulled up the skin on his thin arms and said, I can hear the fat. See how fat I am. 
Tom Davis finally got treatment for his eating disorder and works to bring light to the issue, agreeing with Dr. Mickley that it's usually someone else's intervention that can begin a road to recovery. If we're alert to them, if we recognize them, if we get appropriate treatment early, these are curable illnesses. Experts say eating disorders are psychological issues. They're usually linked to anxiety disorders, depression, or an inadequate sense of self. Dr. Mickley says that being aware and intervening are the responsibilities of friends and family. For more on eating disorders, please see our website at 7online.com. Shade, Diana. I thought I looked fat. I thought I needed to lose my weight. It was in high school that Garrett Athenas developed his eating disorder. A runner, he was dropping what he thought was excess weight to shave his times. I didn't see what other people saw. What people saw was a young man wasting away, losing 20 pounds in a single month through relentless exercise and skipped meals. But no one, not his twin brother, his parents, nor his friends, suspected Athenas was an out-of-control anorexic. I felt that no one understood me. There was no help. There are no large long-term studies on men and eating disorders, so it's unknown just how many are afflicted. But experts believe it's well over a million and growing. It's probably a few percent of the U.S. male population, two, three, four percent. It's a good number. Eating disorders first appeared among men in sports that demand strict weight discipline, like wrestling. But the numbers have recently exploded. No one saw any real increase in male eating disorders until about five or ten years ago. And then suddenly, boom, it was like something had happened. What happens, say experts, is a media blitz of biceps, six-pack abs, and chiseled faces. Men now face the same body image pressures that women have confronted for decades. And some are falling into the same traps. Why would a girl that looks like a, a model go for a guy who doesn't work out, not in the gym, and is not as attractive? Tom Davis battled bulimia for more than a decade. You almost get to, like, this kind of rush after you vomit. You feel like it's, um, you know, it's almost like a drug. A broken college romance pushed him into a devastating cycle of eating and then forcing himself to vomit. Well, it's all about control. It still is about control. Like many men with eating disorders, he found it hard to accept having an illness that society generally views as a women's disease. And I think the doctors probably felt the same way too. It's shameful to ask for help stereotypically for men anyway, but then to ask for help for what seems to be a female disorder is doubly shameful. And that shame has prevented all important early diagnosis in men. We do a much, much better job of catching um, anorexic girls before they've lost tremendous amount of weight. Men who are caught early can be successfully treated with psychotherapy or medication. Psychologist Craig Brown also finds group therapy with both adolescent boys and girls can offer breakthroughs. It's an interesting um, pool of feedback for them having the opposite sex around to say, you know what, you'd actually look a lot better to me if you, you gained another 10 or 15 pounds. Garrett Athenas went through therapy, gained about 40 pounds, and now has his anorexia under control. It's a battle back to normalcy he is happy to share, counseling other men who face the same life-threatening compulsion. It's not what you look like. It's not how much you weigh. It's really who you are and how you treat people. And new research suggests that eating disorders could in fact be hereditary, opening the way to possible genetic methods of both diagnosis and treatment. And that's the CBS Evening News for this Sunday. Later on CBS 60 Minutes and former Imclone.